Good morning, everybody. It is a beautiful day in sunny California. It's meant to be 102 today and triple digits all of next week. So we're starting early. In terms of Civic update, off camera, I actually pulled off the rear tail lights. The tail lights were actually quite simple to remove. There's studs on the inside of the tail light that go in and there's a few nuts that hold those in place. So it was just a matter of disconnecting the wires, unbolting those with eight millimeter, I believe. And then I just dumped them in a bag and tossed it to the side. So that is all gone now. And then all that I have to do is pull off this trim and the car is ready for paint. Well, I guess I gotta put the battery back in the car, but after that, the car is ready for paint. We're gonna get to it. I'll kind of bring you along the way and we'll see how it goes. Today on the chopping block, we have a clutch cable to replace. If you don't know, the clutch cable attaches to the clutch pedal, which engages and disengages the clutch by pulling on a cable, on a wire, right? Now the issue with older cars is there's actually adjustment on the clutch pedal itself to tighten it, as well as adjustment on the cable on the inside in there to tighten it. If your clutch isn't engaging, you wanna tighten up that cable because sometimes there's too much slack, so it's not pulling the clutch all the way. So it's not fully engaging or disengaging. In our case, because this is a 30 plus year old car, the cable actually stretches over time and we have actually maxed out the amount that we can tighten the cable. We can no longer adjust it. The way we solve that, since our clutch is not engaging and disengaging properly, we have a new clutch cable right here. We're just gonna go in, detach all of this, and then grab that new one and replace it. It shouldn't be too hard of an install. I wanna try to beat the heat today. So I have our little light set up. So first thing I'm actually gonna do is toss some gloves on. Since this is an older car, uh, you're dealing with a lot of rust. I dished a latex and went for something a bit thicker so I don't cut my hand up. We're gonna go ahead and dive in here. Let me see. Right here is the clutch cable adjustment that attaches directly to the like shifter linkage. So we're gonna go ahead and loosen that guy up. If you take a look at our new cable, it's this side. But we're taking this and just loosening it up. We're gonna hop in here. And then unscrew this, loosen it up as far as you can get it. There we go. Next thing is we're gonna disengage the actual cable from the linkage. The actual linkage is down here and it's like a, a, a hook. And you just gotta toss the wire around that hook. Just gonna pull on it. Now there is a rubber grommet holding it in there. Some of these parts are kind of stuck in place, so it just takes a little bit of twisting until you could get it free. So I'm just pulling down on it so I could get that rubber grommet out. There we go, it's out. I thought it was out, it was almost out. <laughs> there, now it's out. I think I need a little bit more slack up here. Make sure you loosen this guy all the way. There we go. So we already got that out. You can just pull your cable out. Now this should just be held on with a rubber grommet. So you should be able to push that out and then weave the cable through the hook. And there you go. So now that our clutch cable is free from the transmission, we can go ahead and thread this guy up and pull it out from the clips on the valve cover. And then now we just gotta disconnect it from the pedal on the inside and then fish it through the firewall and then swap in the new one. So next up, I took the clutch cable out from these few brackets and clips here. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this guy which connects to power to the cap and rotor. I actually need to pull the wire out of this later. This isn't exactly necessary. You could probably thread your fingers under there and get to it, but just for just for ease of access, I'm gonna go ahead and unbolt it. It's just a 10 mil up top and a 10 mil at the bottom. Just shove it out of the way, that way I could access this much easier. It'd be less of a headache. Now that this is removed and pushed out of the way, there's just a rubber boot on here. And again, as a good just little tip, you could always reference your new part to see how to go about changing it. So obviously I can see there's just a few gaskets here, a few O-rings, grommet, and then this boot. So I'm actually just gonna go ahead and tug on it 
and just get these gaskets out of the way. That way I can access the clip. Go ahead and give it a little tug. Oh, just a clip here. Whoops. Alrighty, now we can have a better look at where it's attached to and how we can access that. So, seems like it is right here above the brake booster, so I'm actually gonna spin around and go under the dash and see how I can get to that. Obviously, there's not a lot of room under here, so I'm gonna try to get you guys in here. So right under the dash, here's our clutch pedal. All the way up in here where my hand's at, at the very top of the pedal, see if I could get an angle on it, there is little horseshoe that connects it similar to how the clutch cable was attached to the transmission it's just a little c-shaped hook that you just need to get the horseshoe around and hook it off of so in this case you just push the horseshoe towards the interior of the car and you should be able to unhook it just kind of reach up in there and since we relieved the tension already it should be pretty easy just to tug on and get it off of the pedal which i just did there let's see if i can get give you guys an angle through the firewall. Now, as you can see, the little horseshoe is out and we could go ahead and just pull out the clutch cable. Imagine the pedal kind of sits this way and there's a little hook. So you just push the horseshoe over and hook it onto the pedal. And then when you're removing it, you just kind of slide it back and pull it off of the pedal. I think you guys kind of get the idea. I'm gonna go ahead and spray some all-purpose cleaner in here kind of clean out the area. There's like cobwebs and dust and stuff. Gonna go ahead and slide in our new cable. Should just be the same thing. And then go ahead, route it around and attach it. And we should be all set. Now that the two cables are actually both out of the car, we can actually take a look at how much the original cable has stretched. So you can kind of get a feel for how it actually affects the car. Again, we're measuring the cable length, not the sleeve length. So just because this grommet is here, doesn't mean that the cable is longer or shorter because the cable runs through here regardless of the outer sleeve. Here we have our horseshoes all lined up. I'm gonna try to keep it as accurate and straight as possible if we kind of get this bend out of here and then match those up. So you can see those are lined up at the same distance. Now over here, there's probably about an inch or so, inch and a quarter maybe. If my estimates are right, I'm pretty bad at guessing. You can see right there, that is our complete stretch. So the distance between here and here is how much the cable has stretched over time. And obviously over here, they're lined up. About an inch of stretch. And that could possibly explain why our clutch is not fully engaging or disengaging. We'll start it up, we'll try it out, and we'll see. This is always something good to check. It's a good, affordable, quick fix before diving deep and spending so much money on replacing your clutch. Because your clutch might not actually be slipping. Your cable could just be stretched. I'm gonna go ahead and thread that through, hook it up, route it over, hook it back down there the same way that we pulled it out and we should be all set. Just a little side note, there is a metal tube within that. If you could see, that happens to be the perfect size for these O-rings. You actually pass the horseshoe through that little metal tube. These O-rings go in and seat within that tube. Rubber grommet just goes in and seals around this hole in the firewall to keep water. I'm gonna go ahead and hop around the car and attach it to the clutch pedal. All right, the horseshoe is now attached. It is somewhere up there. Yeah, I got that attached. Now we're back on the other side, tossing this guy in. Now I'm gonna show you how you're gonna actually set the right amount of tension on your clutch cable. So again, we're gonna zero out our adjuster so it's all the way back. And you're just gonna toss this guy in and just like we installed it, this rubber grommet hooks around this hook. So you actually just toss the cable through first and you slide this down. And this rubber grommet will only seat one way because there's a notch in it. Just toss that guy in there. You can see the notch is right under that little circle. Now you're gonna go ahead and push your clutch cable all the way down and pull up this boot. So here's your little hook. You're gonna go ahead and pull up this boot and pull the cable down and around to where it seats in that hook. Might take two hands. Make sure the, the cable goes in first because it, it fits around the cable and then you seat the grommet around. We are now seated. Got the grommet in there. Boot kind of goes up. The way you set it, since there's play here, you're just gonna push it up until there's no more play in the linkage. 
and then you're gonna tighten your cable using the adjustment knob until there's no more slack left in the cable. The reason why you want to remove this slack by hand first and not just tighten the screw is because if you don't know, here's a little engineering tip for you. Screws actually have better mechanical efficiency, so it takes less effort to move them, although it takes them longer to move. You could just be twisting the adjustment screw all day, not knowing that you're actually putting load on the arm. You're just gonna twist this until all the slack's gone, until it's nice and tight. Also make sure that the angle of your cable is correct because obviously if the angle is off then it could add more or less slack so make sure this doesn't have any play in it now we're going to go ahead and pull this boot up onto there's a little notch on the edge of the threads there we go now that guy's on now we're going to go ahead and test it out the best time to adjust it would be when you run the car because you'll know when the clutch grabs or not but for now I'm gonna go ahead and press on this pedal. Make sure it feels like there's tension on there. Maybe dead spot. See, there's a little bit of a dead spot there before it starts to catch. So all that is, is just a matter of tightening it down and adjusting it there. And the pedal adjustment is more for where the pedal stops. Check in here, there's actually a bolt. So you could adjust how far back the pedal stops at. It's a little standoff up there a little bolt you would adjust that if you think your pedal is coming too far out yep either way i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you found it helpful be sure to stay tuned we got a lot more content coming this car is going to go off to paint here pretty soon the engine bay is still a little dirty after the car comes back from body work we'll be able to assess it again and see where we need to move forward i just got to replace these drum pads and a drum out on the outside i will show you guys how to do that so this car is ready to be trailered and taken off to the body shop where it will be completely changed from the outside. I hope you guys are excited. I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know what else you guys want to see. There's a lot more to do on this car, but I could make tutorial videos. I could just do updates, whatever you guys want. More B-roll, more time lapse, whatever. Let me know. I appreciate it. Have a wonderful day. TZ on me, TZ on three. One, two, three. TZ. And this is why I told y'all to wear gloves. I actually cut my wrist up digging my hands into the engine bay. It's funny because the cuff of the glove literally stops right here. You can see the line where the glove stops and right below it, got a little gash. It's all good, no blood.